God, we come to you now, and we just, dear Lord, just speak to us directly. Just allow us to, to hear the true message. And dear Lord, just allow us to go out and live it as you live through us. Less of us, more of you. Allow us to become people of impact. Allow us to be people who truly show the characteristics of Jesus Christ with love and forgiveness and mercy. And dear God, we just will give you all the glory in Christ's name. Amen. So there's a um, new sermon series that I'm going to that I'm going to start on. And um, the uh, title of it's going to be um, Turn the Page. This is generally one that you would start like at the beginning of the year. But since we're kind of kind of coming out of like a hibernation, so to speak, or whatever kind of terminology you want to put it on, I thought it might be kind of relevant and kind of eye-opening to to study what the what does the bible say about the next chapter or how to turn the page okay and so many times when we hear that phrase turn the page most of the times what we hear and what we come to believe is that we're starting a new chapter we're doing something totally new or that we're, um, you know, we're doing away with something and moving on to, to something new. But the, the Bible presents a Jesus Christ who was always on the move and he was always pushing, always progressing, always moving. Okay. And we see his disciples in the same kind of situation. They were people who who were always on the move. And so, yes, there may be a situation in some of our lives here this morning to where you are getting ready to start a new chapter in your life and through either graduation or changes in your life. And um, it is a good time to think about what does the Bible teach? How do I enter into a new phase? How do I turn the page and move on and, and start fresh? Okay. But, um, there's more of a deeper thing going on here is that sometimes we get worn out with uh, the struggles of life and um, the things that we have built and the things that we have you know, sacrificed and, and the things that we have tried um, you know, to, to serve and, and the things that we have in our lives, sometimes it's just, easier just to just to cut and run and say that didn't work out or I, I I can't stand this and I gotta move on and then we try to start out in a new vein and start fresh and, and then that brings on all those new challenges about starting out and and starting a new thing and, and then we enter into a, a, a new challenge and sometimes we can look back and say oh my gosh I shouldn't have done that. So anyways for regardless of where you are in your life right now Either you're looking at a, at a fresh stage in your life for whatever circumstances. The other thing, and the, probably the most underlying thing that the Bible is teaching here, is that we are to constantly be progressing in our Christian life. Okay, It's called sanctification. It's becoming a saint. And it is the process, it is the progressive process after you are saved that we are challenged to do. And the Bible speaks to it, talks about having joy in your, in your trials, um, to always be praying, to uh, rejoice when you enter into tribulations. And at that point in our lives, we're always like, why does it say that? And the understanding is, and we've talked a lot about this, is that if you enter into these things in the right way, in the biblical way, the way that the Bible teaches, then we come and we can, and we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, we can, as we enter into the trial, we can go ahead and give God the glory for the victory because of the faith that we have, that he's going to get us through it. And then we have to be willing to take the steps that he's going to place in front of us to move into the next part of whatever it is that we're going through. And Sometimes, and we're going we're gonna to break this apart in several different ways over the next coming weeks, but sometimes we get too comfortable. 
Okay, and you, there are those of us who have said, I've done that. You know, it's time for me to just relax, just to roll. Okay, and I'm here to tell you that if you're still here, God's got you here for a reason. Okay, and, um, you know, retire, relax, recline. That's not a part of the process. That's not a part of the, uh, the Christian walk. And I, I, it, let me say that God does want you to have comfort. He does want you to have peace. There is times of rest. But if you read the Bible and if you understand Christianity for what it's worth, there is not a retirement. The retirement home for Christianity is heaven. Okay? There's work to be done here. And, and, and you know, I, I'm, I'm just going to say it like it is, all right? Last week, I beat up on the young kids about not looking at their elders with the respect because we can't work iPhones the right way or, you know, I don't know what a server is or, you know, if you ask somebody, what does your mouse look like? You say, well, it's kind of round with some buttons that got a string coming out of it. And it says, no, up on the screen. Like, oh, yeah, it's spinning. Okay. So that's, you know, they look at us and think, oh, he's an idiot, doesn't know anything. But, you know, a lot of times we're cheating ourselves with that um, experience and that advice. But, you know, this morning, I'm going I'm to take a punch at the, at the, oh, the odors here, okay? The more experiences. Sometimes, sometimes we're worn out, and I'll throw myself in there. We're worn out, feel like we've done it, we've served, you know, and let somebody else do it. Well, that's not at all what the Bible teaches about how to build a church and how to build a family, okay? And... There is always the idea that the people with the experience, the people with the knowledge are to help the people who are coming up and who are in need of experience and knowledge. And that is how the world operates, okay? And that is how you build a church. That is how you build a family. And too many times, God is wanting some of you to actually turn the page, but you like what's on the current page. And it's comfortable, and you got it figured out. You know, you know it word for word. There was a book, uh, Good Night Moon. You ever heard of that book? Holy smokes, my kids love Good Night Moon, and I could read, I could read it to them by watching the news. I just said it as I turned. I knew every page on that book, memorized it. All right, and it was they're comfortable. It's what made them feel safe at night, I guess. Some of you are on the page in your life that you feel comfortable. And there's not a challenge there. There's not anything that might provoke anything out of the ordinary. And you like being on this page. And I'm telling you that God wants you to flip the page and move on to the next thing. Okay. So new chapter, but also there are those of us who need to flip the page so that we can progress and mature more. And if you're asking yourself, you know, like, where am I? I kind of brought this up a little bit this morning here. Is your life currently reflective of an exodus or is your life more reflected of an exile? What's your journey look like? And I've oversimplified this this morning just for our discussion. Okay, an exodus, what is an exodus? Well, it literally translates from the, from the Greek into the road out. So basically what Exodus means is the road out of trouble. And when you know your Bible history that this was, you know, it's a departure and a journey of people coming out of slavery, out of bondage, out of, you know, a troubled, um, a troubled um, scenario. And it's where they are moving on into a journey that will take them to the promised land that God himself has promised them. So let me ask you this morning, as you reflect on your life, are you on a journey? Are you moving? And are you moving with a purpose? And are you moving, you know, out of the, the wreckage that is the past and all the mistakes that you made in the past? And look, just like the, the Israelites, there's going to be trouble up ahead. There's going to be obstacles. There's going to be things that we have to do. But is your life reflective, your journey that you're on right now, is it more reflective of an exodus where you are moving with a purpose towards a destination, you know, and being led, 
or is it more of an exile? And this is where either by force or by a voluntary choice, you are no longer living at home or where you should be. And this is a journey without a clear purpose or a destination. And it's more of a wandering. And people are walking, just living. Now let me ask you this. A God that knew you before you were ever created and had a purpose for you before you were ever entered into your mother's womb, do you think that kind of God wants us to live a life that is reflective of a journey that has no destination and no clear purpose? Do you think that those things add up together? All right, so ask yourself this morning, take a hard look at what is going on inside of your life, okay? And what is, the, what is the journey that you're on? And you don't have to send me a copy of it or, or, or express it to anybody. But what these sermons are designed to do is to get you to seriously have a frank, honest discussion with yourself about where you are according to the things that the Bible says. Not according to, I got to answer these for myself. I tell you every week, I'm preaching to myself. You just get to watch. And, and, and I'll just be honest with you. There have been times when I felt like I was moving in a very positive, progressive way. I knew what the next destination was. I could feel the leading. I was in tight with the Holy Spirit. And I was taking on the obstacles and doing the way that the Bible has asked me to do. And I was rolling. And there was the not on my behalf, but there was success happening in the things that I was involved in. And then I'll just be real, real honest with you. There were some times, some prolonged times, where I felt like I was in exile. And I didn't feel what the things that I had felt before. And I wasn't quite for sure what my destination was. Wasn't quite for sure what my mission was. And those are the times where you struggle. All right? So... I'm in the same place you are. I've got to ask myself, am I currently on an exodus to where I'm headed towards a promised land? I'm headed to a destination or am I out in exile where I'm wandering with no purpose, no destination? Ask yourself these things, okay? So let's talk about why we must turn the page. Okay, what is the biblical doctrine here? about why we must turn the page, because I know some of you are like, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable where I am. I don't really know about turning this page. And, you know, my grandma had a great saying, and uh, the older I get, the more it means. She would tell us, don't borrow trouble. Don't go looking for trouble. Don't mess, you know, don't borrow trouble. Don't get into things that, you know, not your business or shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't pull on that thread. Don't borrow trouble. But here, this is not a situation where we are borrowing trouble. This is a situation to where we are designed by our creator to be people who make a difference. People who have a purpose. People who are on a mission. All right. And 2 Corinthians talks about this. And this 2 Corinthians chapter 5 is just an amazing chapter. I would encourage you to go home today and read this entire chapter. Right? It talks about new life, new creation. And here is the underlying basis of what Christianity is. And Christianity is about new life. That is the, the underlying lifeblood foundation cornerstone of what Christianity is. Because the Savior was sent from heaven to come down to earth really for one purpose. And that one purpose was to die for sinners. And why did the Savior, unblemished without sin, have to lay in a sinner's spot, every sinner that ever lived, and take on their punishment and die their death? Why did he have to sacrifice that? And the reason is that Without that, we are dead in our sins. And Jesus Christ 
is the demonstration of God's love for us that he loved us so much that he sent his only son to die for us. That's how much God loves us. And so the underlying foundation, premise, the whole thing that this Christianity is built on is rebirth, renewal, and accepting that sacrifice and being filled with the Holy Spirit, and then we are regenerated and made a new creation. The Bible says that, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. And what that is saying is that we are filled with new life. And that is the life, that is the total foundation, the cornerstone of what Christianity is built on, new life. All right. And it says that old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And if you read Revelation, you see Jesus Christ stand up and he proclaims, behold, I make all things new. And here is what we continually preach here and what I really need to, to pray that you understand and that you come away with is that Easter is not just a one-time thing that we celebrate. Easter is an everyday celebration. We are dead. We are covered in flesh that is dying. And that's a morbid thing to say, but every day we get closer to the day that where this life will end for us. But praise the Lord that we are not bound by that, by that um, curse anymore. We have been saved from that curse. We have new life and we will receive new life each and every day based on the salvation that Jesus Christ presents to us and fills us with the Holy Spirit. So when we wake up each and every day, we are again a new creation. And what we need to understand is that this new, cre this new life, this creation, it, is, it needs to become a part of our DNA to where we continually push and we continually push to get more progress and to work more and to serve more and not to sit still, not to grow idle. And for those of us who are on that page to where we feel comfortable, it's time to get up and get motivated and ask the Holy Spirit, put me in a position where I can now go out and serve more, where I can find the, the journey that I need to get on. Because if we're just here and you're just, you know, you're just getting comfortable and there's not any kind of, of um, you know, building or not, not any kind of progression in your spiritual life, that is a truly dangerous and it's a very unhappy place to be. And so this underlying, um, this underlying theme here of new life is it is so critically important that we understand that Jesus Christ is always making us new. And with that being said, it is our duty as Christians to take on that way of life to where we are always pushing. And we are always pushing to go out and to make new disciples. We are always pushing to, play, to proclaim the, the um the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are always pushing for new ways to serve. We are always pushing to get further down the road of the mission that we're on towards the destination that, that the Holy Spirit is pushing us to. And if we get to where we are setting still and that we are growing stale, then that is not reflective of this whole idea of new life and new birth. And each day is a new opportunity to go out and to serve. And so this, this, this question about why do I have to turn the page? Or why should I always be pushing forward? Why can I not just get comfortable? I've been around forever, I've done this and that. The answer to it is that that goes against the whole doctrine of what Christianity is. And Christianity is always about making things new. There is nothing that stays remains the same. It doesn't, it's nothing st grows stale. It's always being pushed forward. There's always new opportunities. There's always new blessings. There's always new opportunities to serve. There's new prayers 
to be lifted up. There's new people to, to grow a, um, relationships with. There's new people to show love to. There's new opportunities to, to give forgiveness and ask for forgiveness. But if we get into this stale place to where I like where I am and I'm very comfortable, that is a death nail to a church and to a family because it doesn't move on. And if there's anything that we know in this life, does anything stay the, chain, or stay the same anymore? Change, what is it? Change is the only thing that remains the same, is that things are going to change. And so think about what we have come through. All right, let's just put it into a very applicable illustration here, just, just as this church. All right, as we were remodeling the church, that little camera back there, that was a, that was a last minute add-on. You know that? We did not, when we were doing this, and the, the guy setting up the, the sound system and, and all the lights and all that stuff, he just said, hey, this package and equipment that you have, it has the, the possibility of having a camera. Do you want a camera? And we were like, sure. You know, if it's part of it, you know, if we got the technology, just, yeah, just put it up there. Well, it's a good thing we did, right? Because the very day that we were supposed to have our grand opening, we had to cancel, right? And if that little camera hadn't been up there, we would have been doing this, okay? And, we, and we've had to do it through Facebook Live, but not everybody does Facebook. Not everybody, you know, can, has the stuff to, to get it rolling. But think about what we've come through technology-wise. Now we're on this sermon audio stuff. We've got people watching it in, you know, in the Middle East and in, in, in Europe and in Africa in Australia, all that. I mean, we're all over the, the United States. I mean, Star Church is now on a bigger platform, and it's all because, you know, we just happen to say, sure, put a camera up there, all right? Because the life that we knew when we made that decision does not reflect the life that we're living in right now. And here's the thing. If we don't continue to progress and continue to do things, then we're going to miss out on a lot of opportunities. All right. So sometimes you got to turn the page so that you can keep moving in the proper direction. You can keep moving towards the will that the Holy Spirit, ha that God has for you as you're led by the Holy Spirit. OK, does that make sense? Now, if you're entering in, into a new chapter, then the whole thing about new life should be hitting you hard. And here is the thing about entering a new chapter is that you bury the dead, right? If you keep bringing baggage with you forward, that's not a good thing. And if you start this new chapter with the understanding that G the same kind of understanding that Jesus Christ brings new life and you apply that same kind of doctrine, then you will enter into that new chapter in the right kind of way. All right. So as you enter into these, as you turn the page, there's always going to be these things that, that come up. All right. And you're going to think, is this the right thing? You're going to rethink, should I not have done this? Okay. And so this is human nature. And anyone here who has made a decision to change jobs or, or to start a new chapter or do anything, if you are honest with yourself, you go through this process about, should I have done this? Should I have not have done that? Should I have, was that a mistake? Would I be better if I had stayed, if I didn't do what I did or what? Whatever the questions are, if you don't ask yourself that, then you need some psychological help because there's maybe there's not enough going on. I don't know. But anyways, we all go through this. All right. We all ask these questions. And here is what the Bible presents as you move forward and as the Holy Spirit leads you towards God's will. This is the writing of Paul, who is speaking or writing a letter to people. And it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. This is a verse that we use all the time. All right. And so here is the understanding about New chapters are turning the page. 
And the understanding is that your life is not your own. Your life does not belong to yours, uh, to you. As a Christian, your life now belongs to Christ. And I think that sometimes we understand that in verbiage, but we don't understand that in application. And we still live selfishly, and we still do things that make us happy and all about us and, and how I can collect more. But the, the application of, you know, is my life truly belong to Jesus? Sometimes the, the ideal and the reality are not the same there. So you have to give up your life and what you want for your life and start this journey moving forward, being led by the Holy Spirit, and you have to do it each and every day. That's why that understanding of new life each and every day. You're entering a new life. The old is now done away with. We are now moving on. Okay? And so we have to offer ourselves each and every day as a sacrifice and say, I have these selfish needs and I want in, in the wants I have in me, but I have to give those up and I have to present myself to you, Jesus Christ, so that you can use me the way you want to and we can continue to turn the correct page at the correct time. All right. And then it says, and do not be conformed to this world. Now that sounds easy to do, but when you have nine million different kind of philosophies and advice, and, and let, me, let me tell you this, okay? Friends are great. Friends are awesome. They're Free with advice. They give advice all the time. But let me ask you this. If you get advice from a friend, you don't have to ask them this, but go back and try to find the biblical foundation of their advice. And if it's not based on something biblical, don't, don't apply it to your life. Don't be conformed to this world. All right? You have to be transformed here it is, each and every day with the renewing of your mind. Now do you see new life? Every day is Easter for us. We wake up and we celebrate our salvation that we are a new creation. We are not the, I'm not the old Aaron who is filled with sin. Yeah, I'm still covered in my flesh and I'm going to mess up and I'm going to make people disappointed and mad or whatever it is. Okay, and I'm going to fail and I'm going to fall down. I'm going to humiliate myself, my family at times. But here's the deal. Each and every day I wake up, I'm a new creation, and I have to pick up the cross that's been laid in front of me and carry it down the road that Christ has put before me and walk the journey that he's placed in front of me. And I have to do it each and every day celebrating that I am a new creation made new by Jesus Christ and by his sacrifice at Calvary. All right? So... Do that so that you may prove what is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God. So it's all about moving towards the will of God. And sometimes we get our own wills in there. And, and let, me, let me just throw this in here too, okay? I know we know this, but sometimes it's not said and it's not applied. But we have our will, what we want. And then we have God's will over here, what he wants. And then anybody ever do this? Or is it just me? I try to do a little bit of this and maybe a little bit more of this. You know, I'll, I'll do some of what God's will is for me, but I really want to do what's Aaron's will. And I try to mesh that and make a, you know, make a hamburger patty or something. I can't eat hamburgers, but I, whatever. You know what I mean? And we try, we try to come away with this idea of I can, I can do that, but boy, I really want to do this. So I think I'll sneak this in. You're not sneaking anything in, okay? You're either on the path to God's will or you're not. You're either a daily sacrifice or you're not. You have either picked up the cross or you haven't. It's the way that it is, okay? I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but that's the way that it is, okay? And here's a, here it is that when you, when you get and you want to bring this baggage with you and you want to do things that, you know, feel more comfortable, you want to go back, and, and here's the thing, a lot of us will want to go back to that page that you're currently on because it is so comfortable. You're like, well, I, I, I've been up here on page 108, but boy, I really like page 100 a lot better. I, uh, that was, you know, that was quiet and comfortable. Nobody bothered me, you know, and all this. I didn't get asked of much. I would really like to go back to page 100. And, and here it is. Do not remember the former things. This is also for people who are dragging personal baggage through their lives. 
All right? Now, let me say this. If you haven't messed up in this life and made a bad decision, stand up. We would like to recognize you this morning, and we have a, we have a prize back here for you. Nobody, right? Can't do it. You can't do it. Here's the deal. We all have baggage. We've all made horrible decisions. We've all hurt people. Usually you hurt the people you love the most, okay? And you got to drag that through the rest of your life. And you get reminded of it, and you get beat down with it. And when bad times come, you kind of ponder on that. And then you want to dig up this, these old fights and stuff, and you think you have forgiven somebody. Then you have a bad day, and you'd like to go find that guy that you forgave and let him notice how much you forgave him physically. Okay, there's all these things going on. And here's, here's what I want to say to you is that sometimes the hardest person to forgive is yourself. And Jesus Christ loved you so much, he died for you. Your sins are forgiven. And the Bible says that if you can't truly accept that salvation, then it's as if you public, put Jesus Christ to public shame each and every day by cru crucifying him. Forgive yourself. Everybody messed up. Don't drag the baggage. Don't remember the old things nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. There's a new thing going on. And I think what we end up doing is we end up spending so much time and effort on the old stuff that we can't change, and it should be you know, left back there, and we don't spend enough time and effort and prayer on the new things that God's doing in our lives that would make a difference and would really have an impact in this world because we're too busy back here. And you know who's dragging us back here? The devil. That's where he wants you to go, back to that. But God says, I'm going to do a new thing. So allow me to do a new thing. All right? And then here's the, here's the promise. Anybody have any unfinished projects at your house? <laughs> yeah. I have what's called um, adult attention, what is it, disorder, huh? deficit disorder, can't, can't remember, I didn't pay attention when they were telling me what I had, <laughs> uh, adult attention deficit disorder, I'm pretty sure I have that, all right, and then now I take these meds and it says uh, short-term memory loss, Arian says I use that as a crutch, she's not here today, so I'm, she's right, I do use that as a crush. Or as a crutch. All right. But um, if you walk around my house, you'll find like things I have started. And I've made some progress. But I just, it's like, I don't know. It's like I got interrupted or I just got tired of doing it or I trailed off on something else. There's just all these half done projects. And Ariane is an accountant. She's got to get to the bottom line where everything adds up and everything's got its place. It's all in the right, right category and all that stuff. And I drive her absolutely bonkers because I can roll with the best of them. And, and you know, I just don't see it. You know, like that half finished project over there, I just don't see it. And so a lot of times what we do is we get into these things and we don't end up taking them on properly. And we don't have a, have a, a mindset to where we're going to finish it. We're going to get to a finish line. And I don't know if it's the everybody's gotten a trophy kind of thing. I don't want to beat up on that this morning. But we have gotten into a, a, a deal here in this world to where you get an A for effort sometimes. All right, and if you try it just a little bit, that's good. And then I'll go back to page 100. But that's not what we're called to do here. And think about, think about what we're really trying to do here. We're trying to spread a gospel that, for one thing, will ensure that everybody goes to heaven when they die. Two, we can save a lot of families and marriages. Three, we can get people healthy. And what I mean by healthy is there's people who deal with substance abuse. Um, they've dealt with physical abuse in their past, emotional abuse. 
Um, they got a lot of baggage. They've hurt people. They weren't the same person they were now that they were 10 years ago. And there's all these things going on here, okay? And sometimes what we're called to do is not only to move people down the line, but to bring people with us. And if we're not willing to jump in here and finish the job and to do the things that we're supposed to do, then that's a, that's a sincere problem. Because let, let me just say this, the torment of emotional abuse and physical abuse, it doesn't just go away. Um, addicts who are clean, you know, that's a daily struggle. And, and, and it's not any, you know, it's not anything for us to look down on. It's for us to lift those people up and to support them. And there are people with, with you know, alcoholics that struggle every day. There are people with financial problems who are too embarrassed to ask for help because they don't want anybody to know that they've got financial problems. And there are things going on inside of a home and they're too embarrassed to ask and then here's the other thing is you bring people in and they are hot on you for a while. And then it's like, well, I got to go back to my life. Ooh, you're, you're killing me. All right. But we as a church, we have to decide what kind of people are we going to be? And, and let me just ask you, what kind of what kind of person do you want to be remembered as? All right. Do you want to be the kind of person who was there for a little bit, but didn't have the endurance to make it? And that person said, well, they helped me out for a little bit, but mm, they rolled on. Or do you want to be the kind of person who was there and helped drag people across the finish line? Because if we're true Christians, God has laid a cross in front of us. And we have to pick that cross up each and every day. And we have to give up our own life. And we have to give up our own wants. And we have to carry that cross down the pathway that he has laid before us. And we have to do it every day. And the only way, the only way you can do that is by the renewal of your mind each and every day. And you do that by praying the prayer of emptying. Less of me, more of you. Filled me with your spirit each and every day. And truly have a conversation with yourself this morning or this afternoon or for the rest of the week and find out where you are. Are you on an exodus with a destination in mind or are you in exile? They're wandering. No destination, no purpose. Thank you for tuning in to Star Church's sermon. We truly hope that the sermon edified you today and brought you closer to the Lord. For more information about Star Church, visit our website at stargbchurch.com. Once again, that's stargbchurch.com. If you would like to visit our church, our address is 4925 State Road 142 North, El Dorado, Illinois 62930. We now pray that God will bless you as you enter the mission field and bring his word to the world. And as always, we will see you next time here at Star Church. Amen.